they say the first 10 years of a career is the internship. And if that's the case, then uh, Star Pro Tears all round, a Marizan Cup, is uh, going to have the best couple of years to come. She's alongside me now as we chat to her for Women's Creek Zone. Such an honor to chat to you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's, it's a little bit out here, but, but thank you for having me. At 29, you have achieved so much, and this year you celebrate 10 years in the Proteus Colours. Do you pinch yourself thinking, I never thought I'd get here, or was it always a dream that you would get to this level? It's, it's always been a dream, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I never thought I'd be here after 10 years. Um, and especially, it's, it's so good to see where, where cr women's cricket has come from and where it is now. Where was women's cricket when you first donned the green and gold? I tell the story to everyone when I just finished school um, I remember my, my mother phoning me um, telling me now I have to get a real job now I can't keep on playing cricket there's no money in it and, and today I'm lucky enough to to take her all over the world and I'm sure she's thinking I'm glad I listened to her because when you look at what you've achieved I mean 100 ODIs you look at coming here now to India and just teeing off in your first game uh, do you get a sense that uh, heading towards uh, the big 3-0 in January next year that the best is yet to come for you? Uh, to be honest I'm a bit sad um, if I look at where women's cricket is now and, and, and I'm, I'm a bit jealous of the youngsters um, but hopefully the next few years I, I can make it count and, and I can end off strongly. You spoke at a press conference the other day about wanting to take more responsibility with the bat. Um, looking at the way you go about your innings, you have a fearless approach. Where does it come from? Um, well, it was really tough for me sitting at home and, and watching the girls play on TV and especially in, in, in these tough conditions. Um, so my big, big thing was just coming out here, being positive and, and, and just making a difference. That's the big thing. I just wanted to make a difference and, and let them look up to me and, and hopefully I can make life a bit easier for them. Globally, you are really looked up. Everyone looks at you. Everyone wants you in their team. What is that X factor that you have that you think attracts people to you? Um, I'm not too sure, to be honest. I always feel like um, I'm so blessed to make these teams because there's, there's so there's wonderful cricketers out there. So I never know why why they really pick me. But um, as long as I contribute to to any team I play for, I'm I'm really happy. Who inspires you to be the player you are? I know a number of uh, players say they try to be the best they can be, but there must be cricketers that you look up to and say, well, they inspire me to be the best. Well, back then when I first started playing cricket, uh, it was the John Tees, the Jock Colours, even someone like Chris Gale, because I remember when I was younger, they always spoke of his technique and, and how wrong it is, actually. And I just nowadays, if you look at some of the best in the world, like your Steve Smith, it's, it's not the pr prettiest of techniques, but it works. And, and I feel like with me, sometimes that's the same kind of thing. You have a lot of grunt. It's not just on the field. We talk about white line fever, but in the nets, wherever you are, you always seem to be with your game face on. Uh, is that something that you have grown into? Or have you always been Marizan, this gun player? Oh, actually, a funny story. I had one of one of my fans message me on Instagram, um, saying how, how upset she was because I never. She said hi to me apparently while we were at one of the training sessions, and I never greeted her back. And I was like, I'm so sorry. When I'm out there and I'm training, uh, I'm just so focused, and it's so hot here yeah, that you you almost try and conserve your your energy. Um, but look, I try my best wherever I go. Um, I feel like, like I mentioned in, in the press conference yesterday, I felt like I let the team down a bit with the batting over the past few years. Um, I know what I can do, um, so hopefully the next few years I can contribute a bit more there. We often talk about balancing family life and cricket life. You have it a little bit lucky in that you get to travel with your partner, not on this tour, but you have been able to do that. How special is it for you? Uh, well, for the first time now, <laughs> I've experienced not having a year. And um, Lazali and, and Minxie, is, they, they give me a bit of um, <laughs> a bit of stick because I complain about not, not having done a year. Um, obviously, it's, it's very nice having a year. But then at the same time, some, sometimes it's, it's, it makes life a bit tougher because you're always harder on each other, especially on the field and, and with her being the captain. So how do you take a break from cricket? Because I'm sure after a tough day, you both have a lot of feedback. Do you take time away from the game first before you chat? Or do you have to just get in, get it over with and move on? Have a good dinner and have a good sleep. Well, she always tells me to just stop watching cricket for a bit or just stop 
speaking about cricket for a bit. Um, I actually spoke to her yesterday afternoon um, after the match and, and we just got to one point where we just said, okay, we're not going to speak about cricket anymore because you kind of overdo it a bit. Um, but when we're home, she likes having a braai, um where I love spending time with, with my sisters, uh, babies, and I absolutely love shopping. So that's my outcome. <laughs> But you both are very competitive. I know that individually and collectively. The latest rankings have come out for the world's uh, all-ranker positions. Uh, tell us about the all-rounder positions and this rankings because uh, you're quite close there and you could very much well pip her seeing that she's not on the field at the moment. Oh, well, look, I obviously believe that Tana is a much better cricketer than me. Um, if you just look at the talent she is, um, I always tell her if, if she had my work ethic and I had her talent, <laughs> she'll probably be the best best cricketer in the world. Um, but no, I'd, look, I, I still f believe we haven't seen the best of her. Um, so hopefully the next few years we can change the face of women's cricket in South Africa. Well, if you're wondering about these all-rounder rankings, Danae's in fourth position, Marizan in fifth, but... Uh, as she said at the press conference the other day, the next few months you could really get into your stride. Um, when you come back, you know, what are the processes that you have to follow to make sure that you get back to where you want to be? I was a bit nervous coming back, um, especially um, in, in the subcontinent. It's obviously a bit tougher here. Yeah? Um, but I think for me it was, it was just, especially the first game, it was just a mindset. Um, because I'm always that person that I want to eat 3,000 balls where Coach Hilton actually taught me, you play so much cricket, it's not needed for you to, to eat the, that amount of balls. It's all, all in your head. So now, this season, I'm going to try and focus a bit more on, on the mental side of things and, and I'll see how it goes. How have the global leagues changed the game? I mean, we look at uh, the Kia Super League, we look at the Women's Big Bash in Australia. We've seen some developments now in New Zealand. Uh, do you see an upward trajectory for global women's cricket? I think it's a, it's a brilliant, um, both the leagues are, are quite brilliant, um, especially if I think someone like me, first of all, I never thought I would, I would play there or I'd even get, get picked because I'm not the big hitter. Um, but luckily, <laughs> the bowling helped me a bit there. But yes, look, at, it's, it's so amazing because you learn so much, you work with different coaches and then you see how other internationals go about their business. So I think it's, it's absolutely brilliant for the women's game and, and hopefully in the next few years, women's cricket can, can just take off. What do we need to do in South Africa to get the game up there? I think it has to start a, a bit lower down um, and especially um, higher up, you have to get someone involved who whose passion is, is really women's cricket. I think that that's the big thing. Um, obviously, working with women is a lot different to working with men, and I think as soon as people can understand that, um, things can change. Mithali Raj is celebrating 20 years in ODI cricket. No pressure, but you are heading towards 30. How are you thinking about the evolution of your game, and are you thinking about an end point? Is it something that you plan ahead for, or are you living in the moment? Um, I try not to think about it uh, too much. I, honestly, I am a bit tired. Um, but look, I've, I've still been going well, I, th I think. So I'll, I'll go on for as long as I can. And, and hopefully one day I can retire and leave a, a women's cricket in, in a better place than what I found it. And what would you do after cricket? Aside from drying, because that's such a South African thing. And I know you'll be getting back there. But uh, what drives you away from cricket? Um, well, I've always been a, a big fitness fanatic. Um, I, I enjoy working out. So hopefully, look, uh, I don't think I'll do anything away from cricket. Um, I love my cricket too much. So hopefully one day I can, and I can come in as a, a fitness trainer slash bowling coach role and, and help the youngsters coming up. Your advice to young all-rounders who look at you, this gun player, they want to be like you. What is the one thing they would have to do to make sure that they get to the top? I think it's just hard work. Um, there's no easy way to getting there. It is a lot of sacrifices. Being away from home, it's not always nice. Um, but as long as you keep going and working hard, it will, things will eventually work out for you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And thank you for what you've done for South African women's cricket. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Marizan Cab chatting to us here on Women's Crick Zone.